Hey there, I'm Blueberry from the Shelter Institute. Check out this clip from our new online timber framing course. Pat showed us how to, using a chisel and a slick, rough out and refine this mortise entirely by hand. So there's a lot more material in this mortise. It's a wider mortise and it also goes all the way through the, the post to accept the tenon on the carrying beam. So since there's so much material, this will be a great spot for me to show you um, a way to use a power tool to more quickly rough out a mortise so that we can then bring the slick in and start refining. The first thing that I need to do though is cut a little deeper um, just inside our layout lines with the framing chisel just so that it breaks these fibers so that when the chain mortiser comes in, the rotation of that chain doesn't rip up any fibers past our layout lines. So again, I'm going to do this not on the layout lines, but just inside the layout lines. Just a gentle hit, doesn't take much to cut into that fiber. I'm just gonna do that at both ends. The side grain is safe because the chain runs along that side grain and it's not likely to tear out laterally. So now we have the mortise ready to be cut with the mortiser. So I'm gonna bring the mortiser onto the timber and we're gonna to start to set it for this particular mortise. So this tool, um, it's pretty simple. Um, we have a bar with a chain, it spins in this direction and it's on this clamp rig, which simply you know, adjusts to the size of the timber and clamps down nice and tight so that you can cut and it won't move at all on you. So the first thing that I wanna do is set uh, an absolute depth. On this side of the tool, you see I have a stopper. Uh, and what I'm gonna do is basically set the distance between the stopper and this top piece here. In order to get an accurate measurement there for where the bottom of that chain is actually going to cut, I'm gonna clamp it into position and actually set the chain on the surface of the wood. I definitely wanna do this within my layout lines because just the weight of the motor and the sharpness of the chain will actually leave little dents in the wood. So I'm gonna make sure that I do that within the mortise. Now I can measure and the distance here will be the true depth. Um, and what I'm going for with this, because this is going to be a through mortise, I'm not actually going to try to cut all the way through. This actually doesn't, isn't capable of cutting all the way through in one plunge. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this to cut a little more than half. So then when I go to the other side and I'm plunging through, it's not quite as much material trying to pull me through. So I'll set this to probably six, six and a half. Lock that down. Before I'm ready to actually clamp this down, I'm just going to sight down the chain and get it set I don't want to cut to the line because again, this is just to rough out the bulk of the material within the mortise and I don't want to get too close to the lines. So I'll just bring it back a little bit and then I'll lock this down. The very last step before you actually pull the trigger and start plunging is to plug the tool in. All of this other stuff should be done while it's unplugged so there's no risk of injuring yourself. Before I start cutting, I do want to point out that I have this mortiser set on this face um, to start this through mortise for a reason. The bottom of this mortise is going to have a slant cut. That's, that slant cut is something that I wanna stay away from while I'm doing this rough out. It's something we'll come back to later. So I'll start on this front face, uh, which has the sort of the higher point of that slant. So that's, you know, it's gonna slant from this point back so I can cut square straight down from this face. When I go to the other side, I'm actually gonna make an additional mark an inch and a half up from what will be the bottom, and I will just stay away from that and, and just save that slant cut for when we're doing the refining. The mortiser 
moves in two different directions. It pivots to my left, and it also moves forward and back on this rack. That's going to allow me to clean out a large amount of this mortise from one clamped position. I'm going to plunge straight down, return to the upright position, and then push it one click to the left, plunge, return to the upright position, and then one final swipe. I'll plunge from this position, then return. After I've done that, I can move forward across this pocket on this rack. Then I'll just do those same three positions and then I'll move forward again until I've gone all the way across and about halfway down this way on the mortise. Then I'll have to unclamp it, change positions and do it again uh, after changing positions. So now we're ready, let's start digging with the mortiser. <laughs> and that's why you should just use the chisels. Just blew a fuse to our main. So, is everything gonna be okay? It's fine, it's, there's, no back, Pat, there's no fuse back there, you're good. Now we're ready to start cutting with the mortiser. Now I've cleaned out a little more than half of this mortise that is going to be through. So the next thing would be to roll this over. And like I mentioned before, I want to preserve the slant cut that exists at the bottom of this mortise, which goes up an inch and a half on the other side. So I'm gonna use this inch and a half thick leg of the framing square and just make a little mark with the pencil just something to avoid with the mortiser and again i'm going to cut the end fibers just to maintain control make sure we don't get any blow out now i'm ready to bring the mortiser up and I do need to do one thing to change the way this is set to go through the other side. Because of the way that this chain works, rotating, um, part of it is actually going to be trying to pull me very aggressively through the material. This is not a big deal when there's more material ahead of that material. It usually just, at a pretty decent rate, pulls the mortiser through and then it stops gently on this stopper. If there's nothing to end on, uh, in other words, if I'm actually planning on blowing through, there's nothing to stop me and then it will just be trying to pull very fast. Uh, what will then happen is it will try to slam the body of the mortiser down on this little stopper, which I want to avoid. So instead, I'll actually loosen that and just pull it all the way down out of the way. Then as I am moving down through this mortise, cutting with the chain. Uh, as I start to feel it break through, I'll just let pull up a little, let up on the pressure, and just gently break through to the other side. Every once in a while, that will still kind of give you a little bit of a tug, but now that I've moved the stopper down out of the way, there's no risk of me breaking off 
this uh, measuring rod here. So again, to set this on this side, I'm going to eye down that chain. Clamp the tool down. And we're ready to cut. Now that we've finished roughing out the mortise with the chain mortiser, I'm gonna take my framing chisel and my slick and we're going to do some refining. Hey there, thank you for watching. Here at Shelter Institute in Woolwich, Maine, we teach a wide variety of house building and timber framing and carving classes. We'd love to see you here, but if you can't make it to Maine to take one of our classes, our online class is available at shelterinstitute.com.